In this video of C-Sharp Basics, we'll be doing a demonstration of variables. I went ahead and created a variables folder in our project, and then copied a version of the program.cs file to underneath this variables folder. I also added to the namespace of the program.cs file this .variables extension. Additionally, I also went into the project properties under basic course properties, and I went ahead and set the startup object to the basic.coursevariables.program. This will ensure that when the application runs, it will immediately go to the new class that I just created. So let's talk about creating a variable. The first thing that you need to do is determine where your variable should be placed. I'm gonna go ahead and put this variable in the method scope. So it's gonna be in between the curly braces of the main method. Next, we need to determine what type of variable it's going to be. What is the data type that we want to create in memory? And that's going to be of a type of string. Now, as I type string, you can see that the IntelliSense automatically detects that I may be wanting to type the word string. So I can go ahead and hit the tab key and that will auto complete the word for me. Next, I need to give a name for my string. I'm going to go ahead and call this display text. Now that I've given a name for my variable, I need to complete the statement by putting a semicolon. Now you can see that the display text variable has a green line underneath it. This is a Visual Studio indication that my display text variable may not be used. And here we can see when I hover the mouse over it, we get a pop-up that says the variable display text is declared but never used. Let's go ahead and assign a value to our display text variable. In order to assign a value to your variables, you need to first start with the name of the variable, so display text. And once again, you can see the IntelliSense detects that I may be wanting to type this name of this variable, display text. I'm going to hit tab, and that will auto-complete the word for me. Visual Studio is also giving me a visual cue that there are other places where display text is in use, and they are highlighted in green. You can see here, string display text has the display text word highlighted. Now let's go ahead and assign a value to our display text variable. You do that with the assignment operator, which is a single equal sign. Let's go ahead and assign a value of hello world. Once again, this is the end of a statement, so I need to put the semicolon. We still have the green line underneath display text on the variable name, indicating that we have not actually used it. Visual Studio gives you a lot of cues as to what might be going wrong with your application or some other ways to make it more efficient. So let's go ahead and use our display text variable. In, within the right line section here, I'm going to replace this hello world string with now the name of our variable, display text. And now you'll see that the green squiggly line has gone away underneath the declaration of our variable. Once again, though, we do see the highlighting of the word display text everywhere that it's in use. Let's go ahead and save the file and run our application. Once the application runs, we can see that the application functions just the same as it would before we created the variable. If I hit the enter key inside of the console window, the application exits and we're back to the main screen. I can shorten up the declaration of my variable and the assignment of the value to just one single line by eliminating this section of my code. And now we have string display text equals hello world, and this will function just the same as it did before. Let's go ahead and save the file and run it again. Once again, you can see inside of the console window, the hello world application is functioning just as it did before. And if I hit the enter key, we exit out of the application. Along with the display of the hello world text inside of a console window, we can do a few additional commands to display this display text to our window. I'm going to use the output window to display some information back to myself inside of the Visual Studio window. To do that, you first need to add this using system.diagnostics up here in your using statements. Now that we have that in there, we can add a few additional lines of code below the right line and read line of the console. To write text to the output window, we're going to use debug, and debug has a capital D, but you can see I did not use the capital D. Instead, IntelliSense does determine that, hey, I may be wanting to use the debug with a capital D. I can go ahead and hit the tab key, and it will change the capitalization for me and complete the word for me. Now I can hit the dot, 
on my keyboard, and that will give me a few different options of different methods on the debug class that I can go ahead and use. Let's use the one called right line. And the right line requires a bit of information, just like the right line did for the console. In parentheses, I'm once again am going to type display text. Then at the end of my statement, I'm going to go ahead and put the semicolon. I'm going to write one additional thing to my output window. So we're going to type debug dot right line. And then inside of these parentheses, this time we're going to do something a little different with our display text variable. We're going to type display text, but then we're going to put dot and then count with a capital C. And after the count, we're going to put a couple of parentheses. Then at the very end of our statement, once again, we need to put a semicolon. Now our application will not only write hello world to our console window, it will additionally write hello world to our output window, as well as a count of how many characters are inside of the display text variable. Now there's one last thing that I need to do. I need to move the console.read line from right underneath the right line here and move it down underneath our right line comments for our debug window. This way the application will pause at the read line and go ahead and display the text both to the console and to the debug window. Let's go ahead and save it and run it. Down on the bottom of your Visual Studio window, you may have to click on the output tab in order to display the output of your application. But you can see both in the console we have hello world and now in our output window we have hello world again and the number of characters inside of our hello world statement.